Most people are unfamiliar with the city's early founders, the people who laid the groundwork for Boca Raton's growth and reputation. Names such as Rickards, Cheesebro, Hughes, and Zakai have been lost in favor of Meisner, Butts, and Murakami. Today, we are going to talk about Joseph Sakai, the founding father of the Yamato Colony. Joseph Sakai was born in Miyatsu, Japan in 1874. He attended a Christian-based private school in Kyoto founded by a charismatic leader named Joe Nijimi. The teacher's influence encouraged young Sakai to journey to the U.S. where he received a degree in finance at New York University. Sakai's innovative spirit was drawn to Florida where Henry Flagler's model land company was courting prospective settlers along the Florida East Coast Railway. Sakai's concept for a new agricultural colony was enthusiastically received. He visited Boca Raton on Christmas Day in 1903. Joe's host and facilitator was Florida East Coast Railway agent Thomas Moore Rickards. Fans of this series will recognize this name from previous episodes. If you are new to this series and are interested in learning more, Rickards' full story is linked below. By the summer of 1905, Sakai was able to establish Yamato, a romanticized name for Japan, west of the Florida East Coast Railway near today's Yamato Road in Boca Raton, also pronounced Yamato by many locals today. Mr. Sakai struggled to acquire adequate financial backing for his risky investment. Initially, the colony consisted of about 20 young men, many from Japanese Christian families. They came for the same reason many have come to America in the past. During this time, there was a feeling of great nationalism in Japan. Essentially, to be Christian was to be un-Japanese. Most of these men, however, lacked agricultural experience. Not a great start. However, they were quickly embraced by the people of Boca Raton. They learned local farming techniques from Boca Raton pioneer Frank Cheesebro, you should know who he is by now as well. And we're quickly growing winter vegetables and the popular local cash crop pineapples. Eventually, this crop would be what they would be known for. However, 20 men do not make a colony. To be a truly permanent colony in the way that Mr. Sakai envisioned, he would need to settle families in Yamato. Seda Kawashima Sakai followed Joe to Florida after they were married in 1907. They formed the first family of many in Yamato. Yamato never boasted more than about 50 families, including Japanese, white, and black workers. During the 1920s land boom, many Yamato families were able to sell their properties for a good profit and return to Japan or relocated to other American cities. Joe Sakai died in 1923. Seda, his wife, returned to Japan with their five daughters after his death. By the 1920s, a few Yamato families remained in Boca Raton, but operated as independent property owners rather than as part of a colony. At the start of World War II, about 13 people remained on the former Yamato lands. The Kamiyas and the Kobayashis were displaced when their farms were acquired by the U.S. government through eminent domain for a portion of the Boca Raton Army Airfield. It is important to note that the fates of our Japanese colonists were not that of what many others have suffered in America during this period. Although the remaining colonists were not interred, nor were they specifically targeted by the government for eminent domain, they did suffer indignities. Tom Kobayashi recalls that they did, however, temporarily have their assets frozen, which as you can imagine, was a hardship. Their homes and possessions were inspected by federal agents on December 12, 1941. They took a camera, a Morse code kit, shortwave radio, and a Japanese dictionary, all of which were returned later. Their travel was heavily restricted. A Coast Guard attachment had to be with the family 24 hours a day. It was a two-man, 12-hour shift. One guardsman was with Tom's dad, Hideo, uh, if he went to the farmer's market, for example, and the other remained in the Kobayashi home with the rest of the family. This continued for about six months until the family moved further into Broward County, at which time their travel was unrestricted. The Kamiyas would move to Delray Beach, and the Kobayashis eventually settled in Fort Lauderdale. 
One of the original bachelors, George Murakami, became the former colony's best-known success story. He acquired prime real estate between Federal Highway and the Intracoastal Waterway in Boca Raton, which he sold at a great profit in later years. He also donated one of his pineapple farms west of Delray Beach to the county for the establishment of a Japanese cultural center. Today, it is the site of Murakami Museum and Gardens. Joe Sakai can be remembered as a great visionary. He was willing to take a chance on a strange new way of life in a faraway land. His journey can be used as a metaphor for the many immigrant families that have been drawn to Florida as the land of opportunity. Joseph Sakai is certainly one of the people who built Boca Raton.